What do you think are the most common mistakes new investors make? It's completely okay to not know what you're doing with investing. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the five most common misconceptions about investing that new investors have. Cha-ching! Before we start this video, I just want to take the time to wish Salamat Hari Raya and Happy Holidays to all viewers of the Millennial Finance. We hope you have a good one. Check out this shirt that we got printed for the Millennial Finance. We're still testing out designs, but we're looking to have this in giveaways in the future. Let us know if you like one in the comments down below. Remember when the pandemic hit in March and things were getting serious, most of us were locked up at home. We all suddenly felt that we had a lot more time during the day. I saved almost two hours every day that I would have used traveling to and from work. With all this free time that all Malaysians had, what did people do? Well, apparently, they started investing in the stock market. Malaysian brokerage firm Rakuten reported a 100% month-on-month increase in people signing up for their brokerage account. This is a good thing. We're glad that people use this time to really start looking at their finances and deciding to invest their money. This will, of course, help us build our wealth over the long run. The problem comes, however, when many of these investors don't really know what they're doing and they turn to family and friends for advice about investing. Well, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing and that you shouldn't do it, but in most cases, your family and friends are probably just as equally clueless about it as you are. However, that doesn't stop a lot of people from giving advice. It's completely okay to not know what you're doing with investing. I understand that this thing is super complex and it's not something that you'll learn overnight. I've heard a lot of talk from family and friends about some of the things that they think about investing which isn't necessarily true. We decided to come up with some of the most common misconceptions about investing, starting off with number one being investing is risky. Before I elaborate on my point, I just need to point out that this is actually true. I mean, looking back at the drawdown that happened in March, we can see that many portfolios around the world lost their value by over half. It's never a good sight seeing your hard earned cash vanishing over a couple of weeks, isn't it? Well, since then, the markets have recovered with the FBM KLCI, which is the Malaysian Stock Market Index, inching higher year to date, and the three main major indexes in the US trading at around the same level or even higher than where they were at the start of 2020. Stock investing is very risky. You can lose your money very quickly, especially if you do it irresponsibly. One thing we need to realize though is that not investing your money is equally as risky or even more risky in some cases. Let me explain. You know about inflation, right? Inflation is basically the rate at which a selected basket of goods increases in prices over time. My dad used to tell us that a can of Coca-Cola used to be only 20 cents during his time. Today, we all know they can go over two ringgit. This is because of inflation. To illustrate this, let's say I have 10,000 ringgit and decide to put it into my savings account yielding 1.5% per year. If the inflation rate in Malaysia is higher than 1.5%, which it actually is, it means that every single year, the value of our 10,000 ringgit, even though it's going up, means we can buy less with that money. So, if I left this 10,000 ringgit in an account with 1.5% yields for 30 years, I'll have 15,600 ringgit after the 30 year period. If instead of putting into a saving account, I decide to invest this money, I'll have over 75,000 ringgit after the same period of 30 years. Imagine the differences with larger amounts of hundreds and thousands of ringgits, which I'm pretty sure all of you will accumulate over the period of your lives. So yes, stock investing is incredibly risky and can be even more so if you do it irresponsibly. But our point is, if you don't invest, it can be even riskier. This then leads us to our second point, which a lot of people may say, Yes, I know, I need to invest my money, but don't I need a lot of cash to start investing? This is something we hear quite often when we ask people close to us to start investing their money. They always tell us, Well, I don't have a lot of money. I need a lot of it to start, right? There's a general feeling among the public that stock investing is reserved for the wealthy people and us average Joes don't have a place in it, right? This was probably the case before due to many brokerage accounts having high trading fees and a high minimum capital amount. This means that those that didn't save up a lot of money couldn't start investing. These days though, things are super different. Companies like Stashway have broken down these barriers and have started to allow people to start investing with as little as one ringgit. Everyone has one ringgit, right? I hope. If you make your mistakes, which everyone will eventually do, that you do it with the small amount of capital that you're starting with. So you can learn from this 
And as you have larger and larger portfolios, you'll know exactly what you need to do and you won't have to go through what you did before. To sum it up, investing is not reserved for the ultra wealthy. Everyone can participate even if you only have one ringgit to invest. If you want to sign up with Stashway, you can use our link which we'll leave down in the description below and you'll get 50% off your management fees for the next six months. So the first two points that we're talking about were for investing in general. Now, I'm gonna focus on common misconceptions of stock investing specifically. Starting with number three, the stock price is so low now, surely it will recover. Because of the recent economic meltdown, this one is super popular. You see, stocks in the airline, financial, and oil and gas industries have taken a beating similar to the rest of the market. Unlike the rest of the market though, they haven't quite yet recovered. Some of these stocks are still down 40, 50, or even 60% from where they were before the pandemic hit. This is where new investors can make a very big mistake. They think to themselves, Hmm, the stock price used to be $15. Now it's $5. Surely over time, it'll go back to $15, right? That only makes sense. The thing is, that's not always the case. You see, many of these businesses, businesses, <laughs> You see, many of these businesses will actually go bankrupt and we don't want to hold shares of companies who are going broke, do we? The same can be said for investors who hold shares of stocks that have dropped in price by so much. They think to themselves, Ah oh man, I bought it at $50, now it's dropped to $30. I really don't want to sell. I'm just going to wait for it to go back to 50 and then I'll sell it and break even. Well, instead, what you should do is you should analyze the company and understand whether there is a big change in its fundamentals, which in most cases it will have. And if that's the case, you need to admit defeat, sell your shares, move on, allocate it to something more productive. I mean, sure, some companies like Boeing are more than likely to survive and thrive. However, how long will this take? You see, experts are estimating that airline flights will not recover to 2019 levels at least until 2023. This is three more years of subpar earnings which will reflect in the stock price. Do we want to wait that long when there are so many other companies that will increase the value of your money by so much more? Don't buy a stock just because the price is cheap. More often than not, the stock prices are cheap for a reason. If you really want to invest in these companies, I'd say you should do a very deep fundamental analysis of how this company works and how fast it will probably take to recover. If you're not willing to do this, I'd say stay away. Just because the stock price is low doesn't mean it'll go back up. Stock investing misconception number four is a bit of a contra to the previous point where now people think the stock price has gone up so much, I'm going to wait for it to crash and then I'll buy. Another super popular one these days. In contrast to the industries that were suffering that I mentioned earlier, companies in technology, software and e-commerce are really seeing their business boom. As more and more people are required to work from home, a lot of companies are integrating Office 365 into their workflows, which will benefit companies like Microsoft. And people like us, I mean, we can't go out to go shopping, right? So what do we do? We go on Shopee, we go to Lazada. So shares of these companies are booming. Because of this, revenues and earnings of these companies are skyrocketing. And you can see it in the chart of a stock that I'm very invested in being C Limited. See the difference in this chart versus the one of Boeing that I shared earlier? So then when I find opportunities like this, I go out to family and friends and tell them, hey, I really like this company C, they own Shopee, and their business is really ready to explode. Well then, they took a look at the chart and tell me, it's gone up by so much. I'm not gonna buy it now. I'm gonna wait for it to be a crash. I'm gonna wait for another economic meltdown. I'm gonna buy it then. What we need to know is that high quality companies rarely crash back down hard. If you want to wait for small dips before entering your position, that's completely fine. But it's very, very unlikely that these stock prices will go down to how low they were in March. Something very common that I observe is people seeing a stock price move from 50 to $60 and then they think to themselves, okay, I'm gonna wait for it to drop back to 50, then I'll buy. Then it moves from 60 to 70 and people think, okay, I'm gonna wait for it to drop to 60, then I'll buy. But then it keeps going up and up and up and it'll never go back down to the $50 level, meaning you missed the entire move. What you need to be careful of though is to buy stock because of FOMO. I know what I'm telling you now very much describes how people buy stocks just because of the fear of missing out. For example, do you remember the company Kodak? They used to sell cameras and film and stuff like that. Now, they're saying they're gonna be involved in creating a vaccine. That's completely crazy, right? So people bought their shares up and up and up and it's up over a thousand percent even though they have nothing substantial 
and nothing to guarantee that this will work. That I would say is FOMO. Buying an e-commerce company like Shopify who reported 100% revenue growth year over year is not FOMO. It's buying a stock that has risen in price because the fundamentals have changed and you accept that the quality of the company is better now and the stock price is higher. My stock investing portfolio is up by over 50% this year on an annualized basis because I identified the stocks early and I wrote the trend all the way up. I'll admit that I myself didn't think they'll go up this far, but I'm not complaining. In fact, I'm adding more and more shares as the price goes up. I'm not saying don't wait for dips at all to buy shares or buy any company that is going up. We need to understand why the stock prices are going up is it because of a real change in fundamentals or is it because everyone just has a feeling that it's time to buy? If a company's earnings and revenues are going to be positively impacted by a change in fundamentals, then the stock prices will probably have gone up by at least a little bit. Well, I'm trying to tell you that you shouldn't wait too long to enter into these stocks because these things will go on for a very, very long time. The last common misconception in stock investing that I'm going to be sharing in this video is that the price of a share does not equate to the value of a company. How share prices work is that you take the valuation of a company and divide by the number of shares it has, which will equal to the share price. A good example of this in the market is by comparing Facebook and Tesla. Facebook shares are just over $200, whereas Tesla shares are over $1,000. However, in terms of valuation, Facebook is more than two times bigger than Tesla is. Apple just recently announced that they're going to be doing a stock split, meaning for every one stock that was there previously, there's going to be four of them now. So what happens to Apple's share price? From nearly $400 per share, it's going to go down to around $100 per share. But in terms of valuation of the entire company, it's exactly the same. Don't think a share is expensive just because the price is high. People only say a share is expensive because the valuation of the company is much, much higher than what it should be. Don't think that a $2 stock is way more likely to double than a $100 stock because it's equally as likely the valuations are what matters, not the stock prices. Just think of the value of a company as an entire pizza. The company then decides how many slices of the pizza they want to cut it into. Depending on how small the slices they want it to be, the share prices will reflect it. If they cut it into smaller slices, the share prices will be lower. If they cut it into big slices, the share price will be higher. If you want to start your stock investing journey, we recommend using eToro due to its ease of use. You can sign up with our link, which we'll leave in the description down below. If you want more stock market updates, you can follow our Twitter account which we actually do a daily update in terms of insights and analysis of companies that we like. What do you think are other mistakes that a lot of new investors make? Thanks for watching everyone. My name is Emir and see you in the next one. Peace out.